Hello everyone, welcome back to Starfield, where I have some thoughts after my second day of gameplay. I will be talking about various locations, but nothing about the plot, and I don't think there are any substantial spoilers. But first, because there's been some discussion about this, I wanted to just show you exactly how it is in terms of getting into your ship and getting to space. And yes, there are loading screens, and you will see them. I will not cut anything out. This is running on SSD and I have an i5-12600K RTX 2070 and I'm running at ultra settings. Uh, but I have locked the frame rate at 30 as far as the video is concerned. The video is being produced at 30 frames per second. So uh, yeah, you have two options. You can either board the ship or go straight to the cockpit initially, in which case you would start in your seat. You can of course fast travel to your ship and uh, here uh, we can take off by pressing space, or you could exit the ship directly, in which case you're at the edge of the ramp, or you could t leave your seat and get into the ship itself. And then there's this animation once you decide to take off. And then, of course, a brief loading screen. Hell of a view from here. And it's not actually a great view because it's nighttime, but anyway, <laughs> she doesn't know that. So yeah, that's getting into space. I'm not going to say whether it's good or not. I'm just showing you what it is, just for clarity's sake. And then as far as getting to a different location, we have this map with different stages and you can click on things. And if you uh, have an unexplored route there, you'll have to do an interim jump. I decided to go to this Narion. And we're going to take a look at that location because I thought it was interesting. It's uh, the most borderline spoilerish thing here because it's not in the natural flow of things. I went to it on a whim, but it ended up being an interesting location. I didn't explore it fully and I didn't discover any of its secrets or anything like that. Grab jump complete. Basically, I didn't delve deeply and I decided to leave the full exploration of the location for later, but the place is this one-of-a-kind salvage. It is just one jump from the main city, New Atlantis, which is really, really boring, by the way. <laughs> New Atlantis is probably the most boring location I've found so far. New Atlantis feels like something from Star Trek, and it sort of reminds me of like Star Trek Headquarters or the Academy from Star Trek Online, something like that. But it doesn't feel like a city city. Uh, and it's just very spaced out. And it doesn't have that busy feel to it and it doesn't feel like you have a lot to do there except for roam around and maybe listen to conversations and pick up some missions which you can do just walking around you will pick up some missions even without talking to people you'll just overhear things that might be of interest so yep here this is getting out and I decided to go straight out instead of going through the ship and uh, I discovered there's critters and there's lasers that shoot the critters, or uh, turrets that shoot the critters. And this was the location, but this was actually a fairly deep place, and I didn't go through it. I was just sort of looking, I, it was called One of a Kind Salvage. I thought maybe I could just pick something up. But no, I think it's actually a place called One of a Kind Salvage, so that, that's like the establishment's name and what I found here was a huge setup stuff that I could steal but I couldn't just take right it says steal there and a guy sleeping right there the guy was not mad at me while walking in I'm not interested. so not hostile or anything neither were the turrets and I was free to walk around and so I went back outside I didn't go into that facility I saw a helium 3 tank there so uh, I'm sort of inspired to try and make some of these ships in Kerbal using KSB Interstellar and trying to fuel them with Helium-3. We'll see about that. But basically this was a mech disassembly facility. And I just looked around, but I'm sure there's something to do here or some significance, but I, I didn't delve deeply enough in order to figure that out yet. But I thought it was an interesting location, I'll uh, just present it as is, and there are places you can find like this, just in the, in the course of wandering. There's these engines, which I'm not too sure how they work, they've got like cooling channels on them, but they're plugged up at the end. Maybe those are just plugs to protect their interior or something, I don't know, uh, but yeah. 
more mechs, and yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm sure it'll have something to do with them. Now, this is Aquila City, which is one of the main cities. This is uh, the sort of Red Dead Redemption side of things, or, or if you like Firefly, this is sort of the Firefly side of things, if you remember that sci-fi series. And uh, though, actually, overall, I had more of a Star Wars feel to the location. It just sort of reminded me of Tatooine somehow. So, yep, uh, jumping around and basically doing lightweight parkour is now possible with a Bethesda game suddenly. And uh, yeah, you can climb things pretty easily, especially with the jetpack, of course. But yeah, there's just looking around and roaming around the city. And I like this city a lot better than I like New Atlantis, of course, and I think most people will. And it's just a uh, much more visually appealing thing instead of the sort of clean look that uh, New Atlantis has. And it feels a little bit busier. Your next stop wouldn't be the Charybdis system, and there I'm picking up another mission. I didn't talk to the guy, but the to he's just mentioning something. So those will happen. I don't know if they'll continue happening deep into gameplay, but they seem to be those kinds of randomly generated missions like there's a distress call or something like that. So maybe. So there's just more wandering. I saw that sort of radar or antenna at the top of that tower and I decided to check it out. Up. And there's a jetpack. So that's a skill you need to get. You can't use the little pack boost pack unless you have at least the basic level of that skill. There's this sort of playground here. Neato mosquito was an interesting phrase. Uh, there's nothing neat about mosquitoes. Alright, and so here we're at the top of the wall. Uh, it's just a nice vista. I really like this. Ain't no funny stuff with that boost pack. Not enough light traffic as it is. And the boost pack sort of appears when you need it or when you're going to use it and then disappears when you're not using it, much like the helmet and suit. So there it suddenly appears. And then once I start running, after a little while, it unobtrusively disappears. So here I saw quite an interesting array of wildlife. I'm sure this was intentional. There's like special amounts of wildlife gathered outside of Aquila City. And they actually warn you about the wildlife quite frequently. And so you see some of them gathered there. And of course I know better than to trust the wildlife in a Bethesda game. So we are not just sort of running up to them. I'm still fairly low level. There was a dinosaur. Um, it doesn't seem... I don't know, something about the animation was not quite right about that one. But it was there, and I want to ride one. So suddenly we have Ark. I feel like Star Starfield is like an amalgamation of quite a lot of things. <laughs> and uh, the, there's suddenly a little bit of Ark thrown in there. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It's inevitable that we're gonna ride a dinosaur, right? That's just a little bit of gunplay because I feel guilty if I don't shoot something in a video. The last thing I want to talk about is my first experience with trying to design or upgrade my ship. And what you need to do is go over to the fellow on this side of the spaceport. I think there's supposed to be somebody at every spaceport, but I'm just going to the one at New Atlantis here. Hi. And so this this ship services technician. He's new captain. My crew can take a look at your ship. And you can stop by the trade authority kiosk if you need to offload some cargo. Trade authority kiosk I need to try out. But, okay, so I want to modify my ship. Okay, no problem. And this is how it looks, and you might have seen this in previews, but I was mostly interested in the affordability. Now, I've been playing for less than 10 hours here, or just about 10 hours. And yeah, as you can see, I have 50,000 credits accumulated. That by looting everything and selling quite a lot of stuff, mind you. I was frequently over-encumbered, so keep that in mind. There was lots of using my companions as pack mules. Basically, I call them Lydia all the time. And so anyway, I just wanted to add an extra crew area because actually you can have a lot of companions on board. And so I wanted a place for them to stay. Now that's not matching the overall aesthetic of my vessel, 
So I tried to go with a module that did. And it's basically a node system. You attach things to nodes and sometimes it's a little bit hard to position them right and sometimes they don't want to go on. Like I had to add another extension and there's a docking port at the top. We do need that. And unfortunately I can't figure out how to make it flush with everything. It needs to be an extreme at one of the extremes of the ship. It'll give you a warning if it's not. So you can't have the engines like the way I'm gonna put them and the docking port lower down. It'll tell you that that's not acceptable. But even though, as you can see, it's pretty affordable, it's only costing less than 10,000 right now, I abandoned this attempt to upgrade my ship because I've made it too heavy for the engines and then I add more engines and then it's too heavy for the grav drive and then I have to add more grav drive and then I have to add more reactor and it just gets to be... Uh, so I decided it might be better to... But we really need a ship planner of some kind because it's tough to move these modules around and I just need something to tell me uh, what will fit together right and give me enough jump range first and then I'll put it together, right? Then I can put all the modules out of the selection menu and then sort of put them together in a pleasing way. So I'd say the ship designer is definitely usable, but it's just not perfect. It does give you the information you need, like you can do the flight check and uh, see what problems you might have and that's good, but I don't know right now whether I can put this little engine like that because it seems asymmetric, right? It seems like it should be mounted in a pair because... But I'd actually want to rotate it. I'd like to turn it around so that the right side is the top side right now, but I didn't see a way of rotating the parts. You can flip them, but not rotate them. So it's, it's not perfect, but I think it's definitely functional and I could do stuff with it. And you can upgrade your ship fairly early on, it seems like. So that's nice. And you can research stuff that will unlock certain new modules, it seems. Uh, looking at the research panel, uh, there are advanced modules that might unlock. It does get to be a little bit of a mess though with all the modules sort of sitting around. And I wonder where I've placed certain modules. Sometimes they get pretty far away. Anyway, so with me trying to figure out what kind of ship configuration I want and ultimately abandoning that attempt. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.